Hello, everybody. It is 9.42 a.m. September 16th, 2017, Eastern Standard Time. All right, we got our open satellite here. We are tracking Hurricane Jose, which is a Category 1. Guys, it's still getting stronger. I'm just letting you know. Uh, we went to Category 1 uh, earlier yesterday. Um, and because it hit Category 1, um, as soon as it did, it just raised the chances of it becoming cat uh, Category 2. They are talking about this on the mainstream media. They are expecting it to happen, believe it or not. So I just wanted to relay that to you guys, that I'm not just saying this uh, because I think that there's a lot of concern for this storm becoming a Cat 2 again. Uh, the spin is really tightening up. We're beginning to see our bands again. We have those exploding storms in the middle that we've talked about. We were watching those when we were dealing with those shear winds a couple days ago. Um, they expected that storm to get ripped apart by those shear winds, but because we had such a tight center in Jose, and because Jose is just defying so many different odds, um, it survived, and like we said, guys, like blowing on a fan. Once you let that pressure up, it starts spinning again, and it's back into its category... Uh, uh, status. So we're going to start seeing these bands more and more. We are in warm water and that's why that concern is there for the category 2. Now the reason that they are focusing on that speed so much is because we know that once it gets past uh, basically the border of Virginia kind of level with Chesapeake Bay, that's where those cooler waters are going to come into play and really really significantly drop the strength but this is the concern. Now, if we were a Cat 1 here, let's say that it stays Category 1 and then hits the cooler waters, that means that it's going to drop down quicker. So we might be dealing with a low-grade tropical storm. Um, and also, the weaker these storms are, the more influence they are with the steering winds. So if we have a tropical storm and a jet stream pull here, that tropical storm is going to be affected a lot more than if it were a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. Um, so if you can uh, try to picture that in your minds. Now, let's say it does become a Category 2 in this area and then hits the cooler waters. That means it, ha it has to drop from Cat 2 to Cat 1 to a tropical storm. It's just less space for this thing to drop, which means it might be a stronger storm affecting the coast of these areas. Now, guys, inside this cone, um, as of right now, we have the most eastern side of New Jersey. We have most of Long Island. It goes right over the western side of Connecticut. About 80% of Connecticut's in the bubble. We have most of Massachusetts. A lot of areas being touched, even up into New Hampshire, uh, the coast of New Hampshire. Basically, this is my advice to anyone on the coast. Um, at this point, it's important to be checking your local weather um, at least once a day. Uh, by the time we reach Monday, Tuesday, you should be basically leaving it on you know, throughout your day. If you're home, just keep the TV on. You want to understand all these different changes. Um, I try to uh, put out videos when there's enough significant change to where it's worth putting stuff out, but the people at the news stations and stuff, you know, this is their career, so they're constantly updating. It's good to have that uh, s source of info going on, and then when you come to my videos, maybe you learn a little more detail about what they're talking about. So, you know, it, it, all these different sources are very helpful. The Internet's a great thing for these storms. It's awesome seeing the awareness going on with these storms, and that's why I follow them. The second they are uh, a tropical depression or even sooner, I'm following those storms until they're gone. So th that's what we do on this channel, and that's what we're going to continue to do until the end of the season at least. All right, here are the current models for Jose. Um, very consistent going up the East Coast. Uh, they do have crews out in a Virginia Beach area. I think that is more because of a hurricane that affected that area in the past. The name is slipping me right now, but I'm sure the people at Virginia Beach and Chesapeake Bay, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is where the models get consistent. That, that cone we're talking about is beginning to tighten up. Uh, there are still models that carry this thing out way off the coast into the ocean. That's what we want to see. That would cause minimal water issues on the coasts here. And the reason that they're just very concerned about this is because of the possible strengthening of it. Once it strengthens, that means these jet stream winds have less of an effect. It could keep a straight line. And that's why they're stressing. They, they keep saying New York. They're saying the words New York. It's not just me. Um, I'm assuming they're saying that because it's like a, a, a known point. And then you say the word New York, and then you automatically assume areas around it are too. But it's important to point these places out, especially Connecticut and Long Island. Long Island acts as like almost a buffer as far as storm surge for Connecticut. 
There are areas of Connecticut that are exposed to the ocean, so anyone near those areas, you need to be on alert for this. You need to be watching your local news, checking the internet for, uh, you know, like private updates, stuff like that. Um, basically, the whole northeast coast needs to be aware. Um, and now, guys, remember with Sandy. Sandy was expected to ride up this area and also hook out to the right. But because of changing situations in the, the jet stream and pressures, it did this weird left hook. So, you know, it, these aren't out of the realms of possibilities. So until this storm is gone, we need to watch it close. That's all there is to it, and that's what we're going to do. Um, again, here is our percentage maps for these storms. 96L, guys, they are already talking about this becoming a major hurricane. They even use the word monster hurricane. And it's because of how quickly it's forming. If you remember a couple days ago, we were following this, and it was formed out here, kind of where 14 um, is now, maybe a little bit more to the east. It formed, and then because of those shear winds we talked about, it actually began to break up, and the percentage dropped to this X here, the 40 to 60 percent, and at one point it even touched the uh, under 40 percent. But then within about 12 hours, this thing skyrocketed uh, way past the 60 percent, and now we are at 90 percent within the next 48 hours. That's almost a guarantee that this will be a tropical storm. And when you're this south, guys, when you're below the 20 degree line, uh, tropical storms, more times than none, especially at this type of peak in the season, we're going to see this develop into a hurricane. So expect that to happen. That's why they're talking about it. They're almost bringing this up every time they talk about Jose. So you need to understand the mentality there. If they're talking about it like that, that means it's going to be an issue. You don't, I, don't just listen to me, please. Uh, actually, really quick, I want to explain something here, too. Um, they're ex they even said that this thing could be a Cat 4 by the time it gets towards the Leeward Islands, all right? And that's why I was talking about Santa Domingo. Two days ago, they had this thing crossing right over the dead center of Santa Domingo and then reforming right here. Uh, yesterday, about midway through the day, they had it shifted a little to the east side of Santa Domingo in this gap here, but now today they have it going right over the top. So for those people that were commenting about family in Santa Domingo, guys, all I can say is that it's time to really uh, you keep those TVs on. you got to be informed, radios, whatever it is, because when you live on an island and, God forbid, there's going to be evacuations, your options are very low, okay? Especially people with lower income that, you know, just can't leave. It's not the easiest thing to just up and pack your stuff and leave an island. So um, that's why we're going to we're gonna follow this, guys. That's why we do this. People of Santo Domingo, please be alert to this. Um, you got to keep an eye on it. Um, I will not be surprised if this thing goes from uh, tropical storm to hurricane within 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer. But guys, this is going to be a significant storm, and that's why I brought it up yesterday, and that's why I showed you that model that had it beelining up this area and right into New York around the 26th. And I'm still sticking by that. That is what the data is showing me, and I live in New York, so if I see spaghetti models pointing in my direction, you bet your butt I'm going to record a uh, report on it. Here are the spaghetti models. Um, I want to show you something interesting. I have two versions of this here. Check out some of these models with this corkscrew deal going on. So, uh, three models have this thing corkscrewing in this area. Very dramatic corkscrews too. Not just little uh, spins like we saw Irma doing here. These are big drawn out corkscrews and this is two concerns in this. One is that it spends more time in warm water and that means if it hits four uh, the chances of a five are they raise. So this is why I'm showing you these models. They're all very, very consistent. If you notice, usually this far out, you've got models going all over the place, like spaghetti on a fork. I love that term. Someone commented about that. I'm probably going to use that forever, just so you know. I'll try to find out who said that. But guys, very consistent models. Even the farthest of these models are still following a similar path. And I want you to notice something. Because of the pressure going on in the Gulf. That's why these models are so consistent. So not only are they agreeing on this path, they're also very much in agreement that this pressure in the Gulf is going to stay. So that is very good news for people in, you know, the west side of Florida, Louisiana, Texas, you know, even in Mexico, all this area. That's good news for you guys. That's the last thing you need. Obviously, the last thing anyone needs is a hurricane, but this is reality, guys. This is what we're dealing with. So, again, I have a second model to show you those corkscrews. Check that out. Now, with these corkscrews, we've got to remember, this takes more time to do 
than these B lines. So we're talking a drastic change in the date of the arrival. So if this thing stays true, 96L, if it B lines um, in this direction, it's going to be a lot sooner that the east coast of the U.S. is going to be dealing with this. If we have these corkscrews going on, that's probably going to extend the path by a couple days even. But again, those days are being spent in warm water. So the potential for a Cat 5 is not out of the realm of possibility. They have already said they expect this thing to be a major Cat 4 hurricane. So guys, that is... Hello, we need to watch this thing until it is gone. And that's what I'm going to do. Here are the spaghetti models for Tropical Depression 14. Um, I'm not going to put a name to these until they do, uh, just to avoid the confusion. So right now, this is... Tropical Depression 14, this one that was here is 96L. Most, if not all, the models have this thing going up into the weaker pressure of the Bermuda Atlantic because most of the pressure is here. That is why Jose is doing what it's doing. Um, we, are, we do have a couple models that follow similar paths to what 96L is going to do when it gets about here. So we really need to watch this, guys. There's potential for two hurricanes to be back-to-back, -back, just like Irma and Jose were, to be riding up in this area. Um, we want this thing to go out in this way and go far away from us so we don't even have to think about it. But the potential is still there for these models showing um, a western path. Once it gets to this area, guys, the pressure here is going to keep it west. So that's what they're um, disagreeing on here. It's because they don't know the speed yet. If it gets here quick, it's going to get stuck under the Bermuda Atlantic pressure. If it stays out here and kind of stalls out, it's going to stay on this side of the pressure. And that's where that logic comes in for these models. And that's why they change so much. Um, here is a current timeline for that 14. Uh, this model actually leans more towards it heading towards the west. I don't see a bend um, in the timeline. So again, that's why it's important to watch these things. The models change all the time. What you want to look for is the consistency parts of it. When all the models come together really tight and almost form one thick line, you can almost guarantee it's going to take that path. When they start splitting up, that's when the, the question marks come in. And that's why we have these big cones. And that's also why we have the big cone still with Jose, even though it's getting closer and closer to the coast. So again, guys, anybody, watch my mouse, anyone in this circle here, all right, I'm exaggerating the circle because area of error can change overnight within five hours in one hour. This whole area needs to be on alert, especially the beach areas, the coast, and and, and that, because we're talking beach erosion, we're talking swells, we're talking uh, storm surge possibly, and again, it all depends on how strong Jose gets before it hits these cold waters. It's like a race against time. All right, we went over these spaghetti models. We have this map here just to show you we're at 90% chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours. Um, I think that's going to happen a lot sooner. If it doesn't, good, but I see it happening. The uh, as compact as this storm is, it's almost looking like a hurricane right now. So expect a quick development, tropical storm, for a short period of time, and then right into Cat 1 status, and then we will see an eye in this hurricane. And that's when those models are really going to start uh, coming together and giving us an idea. If you look right here where my mouse is, this is almost like a wall of pressure. And again, they're expecting this to stay very, uh, very high pressure, keeping these storms out of the Gulf. Things can change, we've seen it happen, but these are the constant pressures, uh, pressures they're telling us about now. Again, look at these models, very consistent, not a lot of separation until you get into this area. Um, but guys, we're going to be dealing with a very strong storm. This storm has all the parts going for it, it's in warm water, uh, the conditions here are actually aiding in the strength of it because um, you're just in this path right here. And if it makes it in below the Bahamas by some chance, these are the warm, warm waters. And then if we're already Cat 4, guys, that's when we talk about Cat 5 stuff. That's why it's so important to watch these things start to finish. Jet stream and here, I want to show you this real quick. We've had big changes here. Now we are back on the 13th right now, so we're in the past. just want to show you. We're going to move forward. There's Jose doing its little dip down here. That was that loop we saw. And then because of this high pressure, I like this map because it shows the pressures too. Because of this pressure moving clockwise like we described, that's why Jose was, uh, that's why Jose was pushed down south first. 
then this pressure moves this way, and that's when it started going west. And once the pressure made it to the right side of Jose, that's when it started hooking up. So again, just to show you how these pressures are the steering mechanism for all these storms. You see the H moving clockwise, and there you go. Now Jose has made that turn this way. You see these pressure lines starting to move to the east. That's creating a path. Move forward. And there you go. There's Jose moving up the East Coast. Now here's where the questions lie. This pressure right here. Now, depending if this pressure stays this way, that's what's going to allow Jose to stay off the coast. If this pressure shifts anywhere closer to the coast and pushes this way, that's what's going to keep Jose onto the coast there. And that's what they're watching for because they don't know what those changes are going to be. And that's why they have areas like Long Island, uh, the, that little piece of Connecticut that's exposed, <clears throat> and even Massachusetts, guys. Mass Massachusetts, as of right now, has the same risk as Long Island in that east side of New Jersey. So this is why we need to watch this. This is very important. So now we're going to move into the future. We have this high moving out to the east, and then we have 96L, already a full-blown hurricane down here by the Leeward Islands, moving towards Santa Domingo right over Santa Domingo not even losing shape it doesn't it barely even drops pressure going over okay it does a little bit there's 961 it lowers pressure right before land it hits 962 and then passes over the other side and goes right back down to 969 so we're looking at a slight weakening over the land and then a quick reformation right here again they're expecting the pressure to be high in the Gulf they're not expecting this to go into the Gulf guys things may change those models are consistent but we've seen them change and then check out where the new landfall is again subject to change we're looking at uh, east side of Georgia and basically a South Carolina landfall and then wrapping right up into North Carolina and passing right over the center of Virginia, uh, skimming West Virginia, and then right over Pennsylvania, and then possibly hitting all these areas as a system. So this is why we watch this stuff, guys. These changes are important. Everyone on the East Coast needs to understand that there's super pressure going on in the Gulf. So anything coming off uh, Africa right now and making its way through Leeward Islands and then up towards the East Coast, you need to know about these storms because basically we are the only target right now until this pressure releases. And this is what the data is showing. Check that out, guys. That is a significant hurricane. The shape of that, it's just... It's, it's just rare to see these models show such a condensed storm this far into the future. And they're even talking about this on the media, guys. They're stressing this storm. They even called it a monster. Literally, their words, not mine. So this is what we need to watch out for, guys. I'm sorry I didn't get this update out yesterday. I had a bunch of upload issues, but they're solved. And this is where we're at. One more time. I'll start this over. Here we go. There's Jose coming up skimming our northeast states moving out towards the jet stream and then we have 96L riding up passing the Bahamas on the east side and landfall South Carolina North Carolina and lower parts of Georgia that is the update for now guys I will see you in a couple hours with more updates thank you for sticking with me I really appreciate it